speaking of presidents and, and Republicans, um, it's my understanding that uh, you were, uh, um, you had a relationship with, with Nixon in which you could advise him about the best way to exit as a result of Watergate. Talk to me about that. Well, that's not quite so. I knew Nixon. In fact, I'd really met him, I guess, way back when he was vice president uh, because I was on something called the Branch Rickey Commission where, you know, Branch Rickey, the guy who'd been the manager when the Dodgers hired Robinson uh, on trying to get blacks into government. And I'd met him then. Uh, when he won the first time for president, he wanted me to be the legal advisor to the State Department. I turned him down because I felt he'd been a, a lousy candidate. I just didn't want any part of it. Uh, thereafter, he did send me a delegate to the UN, and I was on several other committees. But I, you know, I knew him, but I would not say he was a drinking buddy or a friend of mine. Uh, when the crisis happened, I felt, because as I read the cases, and although nobody made this argument, that if you impeach somebody by the vote of the House, and if before you have the trial in the Senate, there's another election, so you have a new Senate, maybe the same people, but at least a third of them or new because he just got reelected, and you got some new people in the House, that you could make a good constitutional argument that that Senate cannot try the person. You have to go back and start impeachment again. Now, nobody's ever argued that, but I think if you, you could make that argument. Therefore, I felt that in this country there was going to be two or three years of Nothing, as the best proof is, you see what happened when uh, President Clinton got impeached, even though the charges, you know, should never have been brought. The country, you know, was tied up. And I think that part of the trouble we had in 9-11 and other things where you didn't have a president who could really get in there and, you know, take care of these things or was making deals to help himself rightfully, I'm not saying crookedly, and therefore I thought it was terrible for the country. Therefore, I thought the best thing to do was to get uh, Nixon out of there and get somebody with well, Ford, because by that time Ford had been the, been the, the uh, vice president. I also knew from talking to Elliot Richardson when eight months before that Agnew, and he had the problem with Agnew, and he said, I, I regurgitated it when I found out that he was letting people bring cash into the White House and give him fifty thousand dollars in the White House, you know, he just, you know, you know, and I. But he said the only way I could get him out was to say, I will go to court and say that you ought not to go to jail. That all you have to do is resign, and that's it. And therefore, I felt that if Nixon would resign, and to get him to say, just. You know, you can destroy all the tapes and just go on off your way. That that made more sense to the country. And actually, I wrote an op-ed piece. Fortunately, uh, when I got up for confirmation, nobody in the Senate ever raised it with me. But I just thought that was it. But it wasn't because I loved Nixon. I just thought it was best for the country. And I think, I mean, you know, I mean, even the Kennedy, the Kennedys finally admitted that President Ford did the right thing by pardoning Nixon. I mean, where do you put a president in the United States? I mean, suppose you convicted the guy. Where would you, what jail would you put him in? Can you imagine taking a president of the United States and putting him in all those guys who he put in jail himself? So the only other argument, oh, you get him convicted, you have the Supreme Court affirm it, and then you acquit him. Now, Jesus Christ, it's one thing to say, well, I didn't try somebody, but if you're going to try somebody and convict him, then you're going to let him go free. The public is, well, I just felt as a matter of judgment that was a better thing to do. And even if the, the, he destroyed evidence by... Well, because he didn't have evidence, because it was over. He's out. The evidence is no longer being used against him. He would just get rid of it. And you also realize that Nixon, nobody ever said Nixon had anything to do with Watergate. Nixon's problem was Watergate happening. 
he's running for re-election, and he said, for Christ's sake, don't let anything come out until after I get elected. And, you know, it's, so he's guilty, but not quite as guilty. And I just felt at the time, I was, and I'm pretty sure most people that looked at it would say I was wrong, but I just, that was my feeling. But it wasn't because I had any friendship. I never had any friendship with him.